<laughs> and we are live. What's up, everyone? Welcome to another Mean Gear live stream. Uh, we have an awesome special guest today. So I'm Ron Reed, marketing director here at Mean Gear. Uh, we'll, we'll ignore you for a second. Uh, also have <laughs> also have Brent, uh, our marketing manager, and Charles, whose hands you will be watching the whole stream. But who is our special guest today? Hi, I'm Bob. <laughs> uh, I'm Tristan Pope. Um, I am a content creator, uh, filmmaker, and photographer. Yeah, so I, I'm pretty excited because this is the first kind of, um, you know, typically we have like uh, as part of our Be Next program, it's been a lot of um, streamers and um, kind of more game focused guys. Yeah. Uh, but Be Next has always been focused on like the entire creator community, regardless of what it is. And I'm pretty, pretty hyped that we have someone who shares a passion I have, which is photography. And you do a lot of like mixed medium kind of stuff. And I'm excited to kind of talk to you about everything. Yeah. I mean, Main Gear has been the company that I go to for the last 15 years. I, I spoke with you when I was in support here. Yes. There were, <laughs> there were probably about five people in the company. Yeah. Um, actually the, the really, the really, the thing about main gear is that when I first learned about you guys, I hated you and let me explain why. I'm me, glad I had you on the no, show. No, no, let me, let me explain, <laughs> let me explain this. My dad and I used to build computers together. This oh, was okay. a ritual of ours. Okay. This was something that we loved doing. Every time there was an upgrade, me and my dad would get together and this was our thing. So main gear ruined and your my, relationship with yeah. your father. So my, so my dad <laughs> found main gear first and he was like, he he brought me over. He's like, "Oh, look at my computer!" And it was like that obelisk, like huge. Yeah. Oh, it's a beast. And I was just like, "What is that?" He's like, "It's a main gear." And I was like, "What do you mean a main gear?" I was like, "I thought we were gonna do this together." He's like, "No, I bought a main gear." And I was like, "I hate main gear." <laughs> um, but then I went and looked at your stuff, and I chatted with your guys, and me and him actually talked about why he did that, you know, and uh, and I, I agreed with him with like the warranty and all the yeah. you know not having to worry about the water cooling and the overclocking anymore because we would we would pull our hair out with of that. Of course, that's yeah. why I have none left. So it was like, <laughs> of course. Um, but yeah, no. At, at that point, I was like, okay, fine, and it made sense for my business because as a business, you want your computer to be running twenty four seven. Of course, of course. And since I'm in close proximity to you guys, and you guys are pretty damn good with. Uh, customer support. Uh, it's easy if something breaks down for me to be able to. Well, I've been here before on yep. like the day before Christmas, oh, being like, "You never hey, know what's going to happen." I have yeah. a deadline, and I got hit by lightning, thunderstorm, snow. Yeah. You know you what I mean? Swap a power supply for yeah. you or anything. So, so I'm gonna um, quickly go over the specs so Charles can start building right away, uh, and then we'll talk. And I kind of want to walk through the configuration with you first after I go over the specs and why you picked what you did, because it's actually kind of different than a lot of the stuff that we build on stream. So yep. you're getting a white main gear vibe, um, and Charles, you can start building. Um, so it's in our um, really nice white colored chassis. It's one of the variants that we have that you can either get a main gear PC in or buy the DIY one. Um, and then the actual specs themselves, I'm gonna read through a list since I don't have this part memorized yet. Um, <laughs> So white main gear vibe, uh, you got an R9 3900X, so that's a 12 core processor. Uh, Beast. You, you got a 24 millimeter uh, main gear uh, liquid cooler, uh, 64 gigs of HyperX Predator, uh, 3200 memory, uh, a 2080 Ti graphics card by NVIDIA, an EVGA 850 watt power supply, uh, braided white sleeving ca uh, sleeve cables for it, um, and then uh, an interesting thing that we haven't built on stream before is two two terabyte Corsair MP600s. These are Gen 4 uh, NVMe M.2 SSDs. So this is uh, on the AMD side, like completely tricked out, right? So yeah. Um, so I guess the first thing that I'd love to know, um, and guys, you're welcome to ask questions as well in chat, and I'll, I'll try to relay them uh, in between. But I've got chat too now. Fantastic. My little laptop. Yeah, but you can only see Twitch chat. I can see all the chats. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so. <laughs> Sorry, walk, non Twitch people. <laughs> walk me through. Um, like, what. So, let's start with what you're. What are you going to use the PC for? Because you have. Um, you're not like. You kind of do everything. Uh, and that was part of the conversation we had about mm -hmm. the configuration. So, what are you, you going to be using this for? So, this will be used for. Okay. So, all right. <laughs> what do, how do you start this? <laughs> well, it, you're like asking me to define what I do, and that's like that's the hardest <laughs> I, question of course, ever. Of course, um, but like, what software you use? What kind of creative okay. things are you doing? So, I mean, my main programs are the uh, Adobe Suites, 
Um, Pretty much all of it too, right? All of it. All of it, like After Effects to you know Muse to Lightroom, you you name it, I use it. Actually, not familiar with Muse. Muse is a really good uh, uh, website designer, like for quick websites. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. it's like it's just a really fast way to throw up a website. So I use that for clients who need uh, portfolios. Gotcha. Really okay, fast. So that's awesome. It's like yeah. a Dreamweaver had like a pretty cousin. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like an easy Dreamweaver, okay. honestly. Yeah, I, I used to use Dreamweaver, I but then Dreamweaver. I got really tired of like having to yeah. actually code again, and I was like, eh, yeah. let me just use this thing that does it automatically. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I I picked that. Uh, so yeah, so the so that I I do mostly, uh, and then I use Premiere nonstop. Okay, I'm in that twenty four seven. That that's probably open on my computer all the time. Um, and I'm always running some sort of a render because I have a YouTube channel where I put out a lot of content. Um, so uh, if you if you know anything about like this kind of stuff, you realize that uh, you know as as a freelancer, you're no longer just giving your work to clients. Of course, you're yeah. giving your skill set and what you do and showing how what you do to the world, and yep. that's how you get more clients. Yeah, and and so what you do is particularly challenging because. <clears throat> even within Adobe's own suite, there's like the hardware variations of what each thing needs, right? So like, oh God, yeah. like Premiere is very CPU core hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, Lightroom is kind of a mix. <laughs> Lightroom, is, Lightroom is the most unoptimized, I know, I know. He heavy on everything program. But it particularly needs like single threaded speed because it's so poorly optimized in certain parts. So for certain things, so right, right. the... The the main this is so funny because the main reason I chose AMD for this is because there is minimal brush lag in Lightroom okay. on AMD so by specific. yes by two hundred percent over uh, the competition. That's actually I, so I didn't know it impacted that particularly. Yes, so that particular action plus the export and import is faster. Okay. But if you're scrolling through photos, that's where single core is going to go a little bit faster. Right. But I use brushes in, in Lightroom because I, who wants to jump from Lightroom to Photoshop? I, I don't either. I don't <clears throat> do any editing really in Photoshop. I do most of it in Lightroom. Yeah, like I, part of my mission statement, and I shoot a lot of dancers and very physically fit people, is that your natural beauty is what I want people to see. Yeah. And I'm not going to go and change your body. I'm not going to morph your body. I can. I have yeah. done that. But I got out of that and I started to work with people that you know, I wanted to show off their natural beauty and that whatever that is, whatever you define that as. So I spend most of my time in Lightroom and yes, if you have a blemish or like a pimple or something, oh, sure, I'll take that out for you. Exactly. Yeah. No problem. But that kind of work starts to really bog down your computer in Lightroom. Yeah, that I, I, I didn't realize the brush thing because that's something that's always bothered me because I do a lot of... Um, uh, not destructive editing, but like um, local adjustments using brushes in Lightroom, especially yeah. Um, with like masking and um, you know things like that. And um, Lightroom's always been frustrating. And it's cool that AMD is the one that cracked that kind of. Nut. I know. I, that's um, like I don't even. Oof, I'm so I'm so ready for that. Yeah, like, and the benefits. So you you got a 3900X. So it's it's 12 cores, but it's 24 threads. Um, and it's got really great single threaded performance and then crazy, crazy multi-threaded performance. Right. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because like the 3950 X has just been like announced and I'm actually really happy that I'm not going with that one because to me, I feel like the 3900 is that price value uh, place. Like yeah. where you're, you're just at that place where like the 20, the 3950 is probably going to be amazing, but I don't think that programs especially the adobe suites is going to utilize 24 cores is it right uh it's it's or 18 cores 16 16 cores uh, i don't know it's it's, it's a lot of cores it's 16 yeah so I, we like i i no benchmarks on that cpu specifically but adobe's traditionally been a company that kind of does cap out at a certain point from right core usage um and no i think you made the right choice and then so you went with the 2080 ti mostly for the um so you do game a lot as well yes so <laughs> i'm so i'm not gonna lie i game i love gaming we, um, we, we had this conversation where i'm like you don't need that crazy of a gpu right yeah no people were like don't you you could you could tone that down and you'll be okay and i'll be and i'm like no 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 you bought a, did you buy a crazy monitor yet you're going to we were talking i have about this i have a, a dual monitor setup of two ultra wide 
144 hertz okay. Alienware's. Okay. Stacked. They're G Sync ones or no? Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember oh, talking yeah. to you about this. So. And and I and I bought them and I was like, I can't use them. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> um and I just love I'm a visual guy. I'm a graphics guy. Yeah. And I just want to be able to see these games at the maximum potential do that you, they can do. Uh, out of curiosity, so do you edit on those monitors as well, or do you have like a separate IPS screen? Uh I do not have an IPS screen because okay. I have calibrated my alienware okay. to be as close to mobile phone as possible I, that's why i was asking i, I i've always um if i'm gonna print no that's one, a whole different no one, thing no but nobody prints, prints. nobody prints anything <laughs> so i actually calibrate my monitors to mobile devices because majority of my work will be seen on a yeah. phone i i actually do the same Which thing makes with me any crazy of the kind of stuff that we do um I, I hate that i'm like editing on this beautiful big screen and then i know someone's gonna be like it looks great i well, think and it's also like wildly <laughs> compressed via instagram right, essentially yeah. and they destroy it anyway uh i see a lot of questions about the specs again because people just joined in so i'm going to go over them one more time <clears throat> sure uh so uh tristan is getting this pc for uh primarily like the adobe suite and gaming so premiere lightroom um hardcore gaming after effects he got a a white meager vibe uh an amd r9 3900x 12 core CPU, 64 gigs of DDR4, a 240 millimeter liquid cooler, a 2080 Ti graphics card, and two NVMe uh, uh, Gen 4 PCIe 4 uh, M.2 SSDs. So, oh, I'm so excited about those, by the way. Super fast. And actually, so for Lightroom, that should make a big difference because I don't know if you, um, so I generate like all the previews. Yeah, um, I, 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 I use very, I don't use the, that area that much. I use develop more than library. Okay. So I, I generally, I generally tend to stay away from the previews, but where it's going to come in handy is that, um, my last NVMe was 512. And so I have Adobe Lightroom and all the Adobe suites installed on there. Okay. And that's it. Okay. No games, gotcha. no nothing. Okay. And, and so I can't even, I can't even pull my like project files off of the main NVMe. Oh, okay. So now I have okay. two, two terabyte That's NVMe's. Be awesome. So I have a basically a working scratch disk and a working, uh, you know, Windows drive where I can just run it that's fantastic. That's that's the biggest improvement on this build for me. I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, so part of part of this this stream that we do is, um, and you're you you've been part of it since close to the beginning, so you know a lot about this, but. When, you know, when Ron was just bit this yeah, tall. When I was a little beard. <laughs> Actually, he was a little taller. He got his <laughs> shrinking over time. Um, but you know, so like, uh, you know, you're part of our Be Next program, which we want to empower the next generation of content creators, gamers, esports athletes. And so I think it's cool to hear the story of someone who has made a living from their creativity in different arenas, right? Um, yeah. And so I'd love to hear your story. I know you've worked for some pretty cool places in the past. And I'd love to hear how you kind of like I got, at McDonald's, yeah. got <laughs> how you got to where you are today and like what your progression as a creative has been. And um, so like what, what's your, what was your journey? Tristan? <clears throat> what was my journey? Was oh, journey? wow. This is deep now. Okay. Um, <laughs> Not emotional career. -wise. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so I, I would say the, uh, there's a fork in, in Tristan's like road. Okay. I don't know why I'm talking about myself in third person all of a sudden because we're we're going on a journey. Are you ready? <laughs> Join us. Um, so yeah, there was a fork in the road, and that fork was after I went through uh, high school and college, where I was a theater major. And oh, the, I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I was a I I was a musical theater major. I loved it. It was like I was like I'm gonna act. That's gonna be my thing. Um, and the last year of college, I was asked, "Hey, can you?" Uh, you know, you have to you have to take a directing course. I was like the young kid who was like, "No, why would I do this? I'm an actor. This is so stupid. It's a waste of my time." And the director was like, "Well, you're doing it anyway, so deal with it." <laughs> it turns out that I I loved it. Like I really oh, really cool. loved it um, so much so that they asked me to direct uh, a full show for the school, um, and I was like, "Oh wow." And so I had to budget it out. I had to light it. I had to cast it. Oh, to, that's a huge jump. Oh, okay. it's a huge. Yeah, it was a big job. And it was like, it was, it was awesome. I loved every minute of it. I was getting home at like four in the morning every day, waking up at like six. And, and you I was found a like, new passion basically. Oh yeah. And I was like this, I was like, I've never felt this way about acting. Like I liked acting. 
I was good at acting, but I'd never felt this passionate about something. So, um, so that wasn't the fork, but that was where things started to kind of get seeded. You found something else cre creatively mm -hmm. that you were good at. Yes. And um, World of Warcraft came out at that time. <laughs> Okay. And so while I'm Interesting directing, transition. yeah. So well, I've always been. I've always. Is this been a about gamer. your downfall? No, you got oh, stuck no. In World of Warcraft. <laughs> yeah, it ruined everything. Um, no, but this is so a like positive uplifting show, Tristan. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. So I've always, I've always done, I've always gamed, right? Like my dad always wanted me to game, and he 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 had the you know, Atari and all this stuff, and so he would get all the gaming systems, and eventually I got so good at gaming that he wouldn't game with me anymore. <laughs> So it kind of backfired for him. I think it him. happens to every kid. At some yeah. Um, it's like Fortnite. Like if I play Fortnite, I just, I get annihilated because I can't multitask. That's I'm, I'm, They're building towers over my head while I'm sitting at the ground. Like, are we ever going to fight? Like what's going on? Anyway. <laughs> okay, boomer. Let's, uh, <laughs> so uh, I wanted to use that so bad. This yeah, that is was great. a good one. Actually. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm impressed. Um, so yeah, so I, World of Warcraft came out and I was directing and so I saw this world in front of me, this vast world that was beautiful. You know, I played Ultima Online as my first MMO, so it wasn't okay. beautiful, but it was, no, it was you, open. No, you go pretty far back then as far as that Oh, goes. yeah. And uh, I was still playing it at that time. And when World of Warcraft came out- I know people who out, still are now. Yeah, I, I actually still host a server. Of so course yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, uolive.com in case you're curious. Um, anyways, <laughs> shameless plug aside, um, so yeah, so when WoW came out, I got into the beta and I ended up playing with my friends and for some reason something in my brain went, I need to tell a story. And I ended up taking two of my guy friends and we created a love story called I Surrender. Yeah, I actually inadvertently knew about you before I met you Oh, because of your like uh, WoW stuff. Oh, that's funny. Because uh, I was a hardcore WoW player. I mean, that makes sense. It, there was like there was like five of us that consistently made machinima yeah which is the name of what it's called when you make uh, videos inside games machine cinema i don't remember what it stands for but yeah like art machine machine cinema i think kind of that Whatever. sounds correct yeah it's let's, about right it's correct because you said it is sure let's go <laughs> with it <laughs> um so yeah so i started to make those and i started to get recognized for them and uh Eventually, what happened is I graduated college. Um, I was making these videos in the basement of my mom's house. No joke. <laughs> like, you can't script that. Um, and when uh, I got a call one day from my director at the time, and he said, hey, I have a gig for you. You could travel around the, the country, and it's a way to get um, equity. Uh, because you have to be an X amount. It's, it's like a loophole, but it's gotcha, gotcha. Um, but it's a very cool opportunity. And if you want to be ac an actor, that's the way to do it. Um, and at the same time, and both with the same 24-hour like uh, deadline, I got a call from Blizzard saying, uh, "Do you want to come out here and make some? That's crazy. Make some movies. Had you been talking to Blizzard at all? Or? So Blizzard, uh, they had seen my work. And they had seen another guy, Terran's work, who still works there actually. And okay. He's he's fantastic, um, and they wanted to they wanted to make a department based around what we did because they didn't have anything like that. All they had was a very big cinematics team and nobody that could make these little shorter in game pieces that would take you know a week or two, and we could pump out so many x x amount faster you know like a cinematic at blizzard takes what a year oh and it's two years like three it's, years it's tens if not hundreds of millions of oh dollars yeah and it's an entire team of like yeah. 200 people whereas with us it was a team of three so they i took the i i remember talking to my the director guy and i said look i'm really enjoying how could you not how could you resist a job at blizzard right so i was like I'm especially really, back then that was pre yeah that blizzard this was this like, was like when blizzard was good yeah yeah, <laughs> not evil. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, they they were. Uh, it was cool, and 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 I said, yeah, I'm gonna take it. And they, they, I remember walking into the office the first day, and and they rolled in three chairs, and they looked at us, and they went, okay, which chair would you like? And I was like, where <laughs> am I? What what have I what have I done? This is amazing. Um, and the first project we did was uh, something that people might know about is the South Park Make Love Not Warcraft episode. Wow. Yeah. 
I did not know that either. So, yeah. Because so I've the, heard your story before. I had no idea. That's yeah. awesome. So the first the first project that I directed was the Make Love Not Warcraft. Um, and they sat me, they, we went to the South Park Studios and they sat me next to Trey Parker. And I didn't know who he was. And so I'm sitting there like, this guy looks like the dude from Orgasmo. <laughs> 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 and I had no idea that they were even the same person. Um, and we're like going through the characters and he's taking feedback and we're working hit side to side That's by side. so cool. Um, and then we had, we spent two weeks there at their studios. We didn't leave. They had catering trucks and like they don't want you to leave. They want you to work because they only work six months out of the year and then they take off yeah, the rest. Yeah. Um, and uh, we ended up winning an Emmy for that. So that was It's like, one of my favorite episodes. I, I As far as like nerd culture goes, it's one of the most... Kind of memorable episodes. I think, like, I think we're being raided on Mixer. Are we? <laughs> there's a lot raided? of hype going yeah, on. Yeah, there's oh. a ton of hype going on. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. That, that's Chrissy Spark, one of our other partners. Oh, that's great. what's up? Yeah. Thanks for joining us, guys. So, <laughs> Thanks for the raid. So, awesome. Uh, so, you, you're working for Blizzard. Um, obviously, at some point, you're not working for Blizzard. Okay, yeah. So, And you don't have to give no, specifics no, no, no. of how you left like just no more. i could i could tell you how it shifted yeah. um that that's not that's not like anything that i'm like oh no i just meant like like you know yeah what, no no what you're interested in talking about um the shift happened so when i first came on it was a lot of working with people um and we would we would literally take the entire qa department over and they would they would take control of the characters and we would direct them in game oh, to make these cinematics. That's a ton of fun. Yeah. Oh, oh, so much fun. I mean, even the South Park episode, like a real person went through one of the frames right, right. and we had to throw him out of the scene. <laughs> um, and this guy was probably like, what the hell? And that was like so <laughs> against the rules. Like the fact that we were even allowed to do that awesome. because it was a South Park episode yeah, was so much fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we, we actually talked to the guy and we were like, we're so sorry, but this is a Blizzard employee, blah, blah. You know, like we were, we were nice. Um, and the guy was just happy to be like, oh, Blizzard employee, yeah, cool. Super cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so after doing a bunch of stuff for Blizzard and doing a bunch of different cinematics in game and stuff like that, um, everything got very automated and we eventually merged with the cinematics team. Okay. And so everything was no longer working with the people and directing the people. Oh, it was like scripted stuff? It was scripted to the point of perfection. Okay. And you had to start learning 3D Max and 3D Studio, all this, all these programs that I, gotcha. I had no interest in. I gotcha. And this okay. was not why I thought I was hired. I, I, gotcha. I was, I figured I was hired for, you know, that, that directing ability and, and the fact that I was good at that part. And so I saw the company going in a direction that didn't, line up with what I was yeah, and doing they, anymore. They, they've, you know, changed dramatically since then with the right. EA acquisition and yeah, it's and not that that close knit homegrown kind of gaming company. Yeah, Activision had come in when I was there. And just as a like a I, I I hear a lot of people say like when Activision came in they ruined things, but like it took years for them. It to took ruin a things. very long time for <laughs> Activision to actually get a, a foothold. Yeah. Because I remember a day and like this is this is public information where um Bobby Kodak came in and he sent an email out to Blizzard when we first merged saying like some, it was like a motivational thing, but also like a, you better work hard type of thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Two minutes later, the dude is in the, the quad and walking up to Mike Morheim, the president <laughs> of the Times office. And then two minutes later, he's walking out with his tail between his legs and one minute later, an email from Bobby Kodak comes to the entire Blizzard campus saying, so sorry, just kidding, kind of thing. <laughs> like Mike must have just ripped him a new one. It was amazing. I, I'm sure they wanted to keep the culture and then it just, separate. It took a, it took a while, but they eventually. It was like Blizzard was Blizzard and Activision yeah. was Activision, yeah. and they they even told us that over and over again. Like these yeah. will never be the same thing. So things obviously they, did they change, um, but so, that's not. I don't. Whatever. Yeah, they, that's it, their thing. It's the game industry. So you you leave Blizzard and then like what did you start doing? Yeah. So I decided you know if I'm gonna open, I decided I was gonna. I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to open my own business. Um, and I was like, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do that in a place where I love, which is the East Coast. And I'm gonna come back specifically New Jersey. Yeah. Well, no, not specifically I New know, Jersey. I, I just looked at New York when I came back and was like, <laughs> oh my god, the prices went up. So I was like, how close can I get? It's not bad here. Come on. <clears throat> I love New Jersey. No, I like. I actually really like New Jersey. So it's like it's funny. I it, the stigma attached to it is just it's overblown. Uh, it's just because of the airport. If right. it wasn't for Newark Airport, people would think New Jersey is awesome. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and it's you know, and I have a beautiful two bedroom, like, and and you can't get that yeah. in New York. So anyway, um, I came back 
and I had a list of like five things that I wanted to do to see what, because I, I had heard this guy talking, this, he was giving a speech and he was saying, uh, you, uh, oh yeah, he was talking about being a producer. He was like, if you want to be a producer, and he was, it was a Blizzard guy. He was like, if you want to be a Blizzard producer, you have to eat uh, and sleep yeah, yeah. Uh, producer. And I was like, okay, all right. So I have to figure out something that I can eat and sleep. Yeah. And so I can do that. Okay, cool. So I picked five things. First was to do photography for like uh, glamour and like magazines. Yeah, you do like fashion right. style kind of photography. So I did that and I was successful. And then the next thing was to direct a, a theater production. I did that. It was successful. Um, the next thing was, uh, and I, I always forget what the five things are. Like it's really weird. <laughs> like I actually like closed this part of my life out of my brain. Um, Maybe YouTube? I don't know. There, okay. I, I did. I did actually do streaming for a bit. Um, I was on Justin TV when it first launched, and I had a pre huge, pre Twitch, huge yeah. following. Huge. I mean, I had thousand people watching me a day, but back then it didn't equate yeah. to money, so I couldn't maintain it. And I was like, "Well, this is stupid. Why am I doing this?" So I left that. Had I stayed, it's like one of those things where you look back and you're like, "Damn it, I was too soon." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah absolutely. And yeah, so I did that, and then. I was like, well, now, oh, and then videography. And so I started to do some directing of videography and I did all these things and they were successful, but I didn't have that ding. Yeah. No light bulb went yeah. over my head. Yeah. And I went into like a deep depression. I couldn't get anything done. Oh, this is getting dark now. Yeah. So like I, for about two years, I, I did nothing. I mean, I, I made money. I did jobs. You just weren't doing something you were passionate but about. I didn't, and you weren't yeah. Like I was stuck yeah. by what that guy said which was you have to wake up every day and be passionate about one thing. It yeah. has to be one thing. So eventually what I learned is that he was wrong and for me. No, and I, so I, the reason I was excited to talk to you today is I think what you do for a living is actually the common creative path. Like it's not, um, you know, so we have some people who are fortunate enough to be able to like make a full living on Twitch, for example. But I think that's actually less common in the creative space. And the more yeah. common thing is what is your path, which is you're, you're talented creatively. And so you, you kind of grind different angles and, and you find little pockets that you're passionate about and work in them. And I think it's actually probably like, if you were to look at all of the creatives, like, like your path is probably more in line with the average. And um, I, I think that's awesome because there's a lot of like, there's a lot of people who kind of like do, want, want to just do that one thing, but I think it's it's important to kind of make yourself well versed creatively and it, kind yeah. of have it, multiple revenue streams as a creative. I've taught a lot of classes to younger kids um, where I talk to them about you know what do you want to be, what do yeah. you want to do, you know, and I tell them about my path, um, and I tell them the same thing, and I tell them I say every day I wake up and I do one thing that I'm passionate about. It could be making a YouTube video. It could be doing photography. It could be making, you know, going and playing some Twitch games with Slayer OTG. You in the chat? Yeah, he is. I think he is. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can be doing that kind of stuff. And as long as you're doing one thing every day, yep. then you'll be successful because you're giving your brain that outlet. You're giving your brain that release. And the funny thing is, is that once I understood that there's going to be days where I'm not going to have a job, there's going to be days where I'm going to be sitting there like- It's one of the weirdest parts about being a freelancer. I have downtime yeah. and I don't know what to do with it and yeah. I'm not getting paid today, but that's okay. That's when I started to get more jobs. Yep. Because you have to accept the path that you've taken, which is not as easy as people think. A lot of people, when they hear me say I'm a freelancer, they're like, oh, I'm jealous. And I'm like, I would love to see you sit in my shoes for two days. The, the thing with freelancing that most people don't think is like, freelancing isn't just like, oh, I get all these jobs and then I go and do them. Like 80% of freelancing is finding the work, like in managing that part of the business that you have. Yeah. Like it's, it's, more, <laughs> yeah. it's like, it, it's I spend like, more time on Instagram than I do actually taking photos. And, and that's the case with like <laughs> photography and, and, um, videographers and, and that kind of stuff is like, there's a big grind with finding the work mm -hmm. and that's, that's still work. Like that's a part yeah. of it. Like and a, and a ton creating. of my work you'll never see, 
like there's so much behind the scenes work that I do, like yeah. commercials and stuff for other companies in China and stuff like that, that I have no reason to put that on my reel, but man, it pays, yeah. you know, like there's a lot of paying gigs that you just will never know that I ever did. Um, YouTube has been a good outlet for me because it's, it's given me a new place to show what I'm passionate about while also giving a voice to those that are interested yeah. in it as well. I was going to say for me, um, looking at all your content, it seemed like YouTube was more of like a passion project. Yeah. Um, and like you could tell cause your, your content's a little all over the place as far as like, Oh you, hell yeah. <laughs> like you, you haven't like focused on one particular <clears throat> thing, which is usually on YouTube, like not the greatest thing because of, um, yeah, you usually just, get murdered by it, it. Yeah. But it's, it's cool that you've kind of focused on what your interests are and YouTube is, it seems like YouTube is just a creative personal outlet um, that you kind of utilize for the stuff you just like. Well, the cool, the cool thing about my YouTube subscribers is that they tend to go with the flow. Um, and th what, what I think is interesting is that I have like pockets, right? Of people. Yeah. And this pocket of people will come if I make X video and this pocket of people will come if I make Y video, but they hang out. And they, they all come to yeah, see the different yeah. videos. And I think the biggest thing that people enjoy uh, about what I do is that I don't care about telling you how I did it. Yeah. Like I'm one of those people that is happy to share with you the secrets or the, the what I, you know, how I, how I made this photo or how I did this. And I'll show you behind the scenes. Um, and I think it's, it's helpful for people to see that because then you can learn. And it's, I, I'm not afraid of them taking my job. Yeah. Because they can do exactly what I'm doing. I mean, like the yeah, it's why we're showing us building a PC, right? Right. And and uh, his his ability to build that yeah. PC is his ability. Yeah, yeah, and hundred percent. And actually as we're looking at his hands, this is the guy that built my uh my second PC from Main Gear too. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> props to him. But yeah, no, it's a skill set. And I don't have to worry about someone out there just because they know my technique. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna I don't think they're me. They're not going to be able to shoot it the same way. It's interesting too, because like, um, you've managed to create like, uh, like, like, little repeatable things that you've done on YouTube in a completely different areas that have done well. Um, like recently, you did the uh, photography review of the new iPhone. Okay. Um, and you've done like consistently like content like that for a couple of years. Yeah. And then you have content that's completely different. Like you'll review our chair or your right. Backpack. Yeah. And then, or completely in like, you'll put upload some game footage, but you're, you're kind of consistent with some of the thematic things that you do. Well, which, so I mean, all generate of, those pockets, all of these things are, which I've learned are related. Like my photography is directly related to reviewing your bag yeah. because I'm using your bag for my photography. That's a good point too. And then your chair is directly related to my workflow because that's part of my office, which is directly related to what I'm set spending most of my time in. And then my iPhone videos are directly related to my photography and the and the way that things are moving forward with technology because I'm shooting on the on the hottest tech all the time. Yep. So all of this stuff is all, all related and it all ties together. Um, the only thing that isn't is the vaping stuff, which I've, I've started to pull back from that. I just, YouTube is not happy. It's no, story. YouTube is not, it, the whole world is not happy. Yeah. Well, no, I'm sorry. Oh, the whole United States yeah. is not happy with that well, right we're now. We're not going to go down that route. But yeah, anyway, but so, it's, it's just like, it's it, now that I've had, yeah. now I have, I have a, I have a clear goal of where I want to go now. And so I made a big pivot about six months ago. That's cool. And my whole channel has been changing towards that. And it seems to be doing pretty well with that. That's so awesome. So one of the things um, that I like to kind of stress on this show, um, when we talk to creators is you know, no one likes to talk about the work that they put in publicly. <laughs> like you usually just see the success story and you don't see the um, grinding behind the scenes. Yeah. And I, I think you um, consume the you consume the, the, the five minute video in five minutes, even though it took 12 weeks. Exactly. And, and so people kind of think like, oh, you know, I'll be a YouTuber or whatever. It's not a lot of work. And they don't realize that it's just a job like everything else. And I, um, I think you know what you just kind of walked us through is like a really good example of the amount of work it takes to um, to put into this. Now I'm, I've gotten like forty questions. I know I, I I I was looking down. I saw that. So yeah. I'm just gonna go over the specs one more time since 
Yet again, Brent has not put them on a slider on the, on the screen. Thanks, Brent. Uh, so we're building a P <laughs> we're, we're building a PC wow, for your uh, to do Lightroom, <laughs> Premiere, all of your creative work that we just went over. Yes. Um, and you got a white maker vibe with a 3900x CPU, AMD uh, R9. We were having a huge to talk about white and black earlier. We were. Um, yeah, you're a big fan, apparently. Yep. Um, you've gonna, got a yep. uh, uh, 2080 Ti. Uh, and 64 gigs of RAM. And the storage, which is what been asked about a bunch, is it's two 2 terabyte NVMe uh, PCIe 4 Corsair drives. And then Cri Tristan brought some of his own drives too to be. Oh, yeah. Up even oh, more. He did. <clears throat> There's two okay. drives of mine from there. Um, one is a, uh, a Samsung one terabyte SSD, and then one is just a normal two terabyte hard drive. I still have. And the reason for that is because that's my. Google Drive and Dropbox Drive, yeah. where I, if I, it fails, I don't care, but yeah. I want to be able to have some of that stuff locally. I still have um, eight terabytes of hard drive storage because I um, I don't delete any photography at all. Well, I have my NOS drive for that. Okay. So I keep that all on my PC. I haven't switched oh, to like no. an external external one yet. I don't have as much as... I'm sure you have probably have like, like 15, 20 terabytes of... 35. Okay, <laughs> also, I, I don't shoot video though. Oh, which, but which, but I have the Sony A seven R three, and that thing just pumps out these giant oh, know, files. Yeah. Oh, I still shoot Canon because I just can't stand Sony's colors. We but. need to get you. Uh, okay, so that that we all first first we need to get you on the train where now Sony has well, upgraded okay. its firmware. Well, listen. So we <laughs> use a A seven R two here for product photography. Um, you just you just a couple of well the two after the three series is when they yeah, changed yeah. and their color science is neutral enough where you can get whatever you want that used to okay. be what canon I, was i still don't like their um their their default is still very cold okay um okay. but it's it's you can still pull off okay just with a slight adjustment gotcha. you, you're going to adjust all your photos of course, anyway of course and then i'm not a huge fan of um <clears throat> their like non l equivalent prime lenses um like they're just oh the G Masters no like th those are fine but they're they don't have like Canon's got like a three hundred fifty dollar eighty five oh yeah that's awesome oh yeah like, no there's there's no there's, there's no that. affordable glass yeah in the Sony line and I have like I'm I learned a, that lesson very quickly and I'm an all prime guy so me like, too it's it's staggeringly it, different it's it's thousands of yeah. dollars staggering I mean, <laughs> differently like, it, you know, it hurt really i have bad. a i have a, a 28 a 35 a 50 an 85 100 and a 135 canon and they're all yeah. like sub 600 dollars. yeah i know and i hate that are like hate super it. sharp like, and i know um that's the only thing i can say that i dislike about sony yeah. is that their lenses are just if, out of this world if you're expensive. a zoom shooter and you do the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 it's not too bad even then they're they're more, they're expensive. more expensive <laughs> they are more expensive but at least you're like you're just getting two lenses right okay. but i don't do that yeah so yeah. it's which is stupid because prior to sony i did do that oh really and then when i swapped over i was like well well, they didn't have all the lenses originally. Right. Either. They and didn't I, have a 7200 until like a year and a half. Right. right. And I wanted to see what I, I went through all my photos before I swapped and I looked at the metadata and I was like, what's the most used? And I ran it through a program that does my most used. And it was these, it was 24, uh, 50 and uh, 70 to 200. Okay. So I was like, why don't I just get primes? Yeah. So I did. I, and, I'm a huge oh, advocate. Love them. So, um, so you mentioned that you've been changing your content. So like what? What is kind of your, like, next year, like, where, where do you think you're going to be as a content creator? Like, what do you see yourself doing, focusing on mostly? Yeah, so uh, I think two things in particular. Um, the first thing is, what are, you, what are you magically doing with your hands over there? <laughs> <laughs> um, so two things uh, in particular. Uh, the first is going to be mobile photography. Okay. I'm going to be focusing a lot on that and how people can get into it with the phone that's in their pocket. You know, we talk about that a lot, even with streaming in that um, you, you get people who are like, oh, I have to have X in order to stream. And it's like, no, you can. Right. You can you can work well with the tools you have at your disposal yes. and build into what you want. And I've been doing I've been doing these. I've been doing mobile stuff for so long now. Yeah. And I have a reputation as like the mobile guy, yeah. which I didn't intentionally do but it just kind of happened because i enjoyed uh, playing so, with the tech. so many youtube channels i follow like did one video that became their whole channel oh i know like the unbox therapy he broke one iphone and boom he's yep. I follow, unboxing everything <laughs> i follow one guy i really like that reviewed the fuji x um xt2 
Okay. And like he became now the he's number a Fuji one. guy. Literally, every video is about <laughs> Fuji cameras because he he yeah. trended on YouTube for the Fuji review and was the number one Fuji review. And then well, I mean, most of my everything. most of my mobile work is on iPhone because I just I like them. Yeah. Um, but I I put up a Google Pixel uh, video and that video did astronomically well. Um, it might be because it's a Google video on YouTube, but whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, I, so that's part of it. And I want to show how you can, how this stuff can be very accessible. Like my next video that I have coming up is, um, is, is going to be showing off a $30 light compared to a $599 well-marketed light and how you can get the same results. Yeah. Um, and with mobile. Oh yeah. There's so much you can do inexpensively with certain creative. Right. Um, Cause I got, I, when I saw the five, like there's, it's a, it's a very specific light. I'm not going to name it here because I don't want to, you know, but it's a very specific light. And when I saw the price tag and I saw what it did and I looked at the output and the tech specs of it, which I don't really put on my channels. Like I don't get really techie. Yeah. I talk more like, you How know, how to use it. Like yeah. if it's a good product. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, because I feel like people can relate to that more than like, well, it's 12 millimeters to the, of you course, know, uh, who cares? Um, and so when I, when I saw it and I saw the specs on it, I got mad because they're literally charging 500 extra dollars yeah. for a $30 LED. Well, and well, that's the funny part with LEDs particularly, right? Is there's only like three good LED, like people who make the LEDs. Yeah. And so like you only could do so much. Right. Like, yeah. Right now the tech is actually lit. There's actually a, a cap to where it, it can go. Right. And that's really interesting. Um, do you uh do you think you'll do any stuff on like mobile editing or um so I, <laughs> like like stuff like that I as have, well? I get asked that a lot. Um I will I will probably never edit off of my phone. Not even like a smidge. I have I have I have LumaFusion. Okay. Have you uh, ever used um what is it? Lens distortions that does like the um uh it's like like relatively like well done like flares and stuff. I have like a thing called there. Focos that okay. lets me change the bokeh. Okay. And it lets me change the bokeh to be the equivalent of different cameras. And oh, I have used cool. that a lot. Okay. Um, so that kind of editing, yes, absolutely. But if we're talking about like full video editing. Oh, no. I, that's oh, okay. That's what I thought you said. No, that's no, what I thought no. You meant. Photo stuff. Photo stuff. Oh, no. Photo stuff. Absolutely. I think that I think that editing on your phone, if you can just edit off your phone, like why not? Um, I actually edit real photos on my phone. So I call in mobile Lightroom okay. from my phone because it's almost like um, uh, if, if calling is basically if you go out and you take like, you know, you go out for a day with your family and you take a thousand photos and you want to like go through and pick the good ones um, with mobile Lightroom. It's almost like using Tinder because you can just swipe through and pick the ones that you like if you sync to the mobile cloud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's really mm -hmm. cool. It's It's actually faster than going through them in. Um, Lightroom I bet. on the yeah, desktop. I bet. It, calling in Lightroom is one of the worst. I know. Or, do you use Photo Mechanic or no for no, calling? I've never even heard of it. Uh, Photo Mechanic's like a insanely well optimized um, software that only does one thing well, which is load okay. the JPEG preview from raw files and let you go through and hit a button to flag them. Oh, so they load instantly. Oh, that's uh, cool. So you it, you know what I use for when I want to like call through a bunch of stuff is Capture One. Okay. Super fast. Okay. Capture one's just, not bad. It Photo, works fantastic. Photo mechanic's the fastest, but it's not good at anything else. Okay. So it's literally like 150 bucks to, oh, to call. All like, right. Uh, but it's probably like the- It's fast. Yeah. And it's easy to go through yeah. with the client, like yeah. boom, 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 boom. I'm, I'm, I'm a hyper nerd when it comes to um, like people's like work. We're not, I'm not going to have this conversation now because it's too nerdy, but I'm like- So nerdy. I'm so nerdy when it comes to like <laughs> workflows- like production workflows, like ah uh, yeah, like we how were do you, chatting about this. How do you day. import, yeah, backup, yeah. organize? Like, like yeah, I, and he has a crazy system I'm, for this stuff, which will be like you'll. I, I don't, I don't know who would, who could follow it unless you drew like a graph. I, oh, I'd have to. I have like a <laughs> post I made somewhere about, but I, I'm, I love processes and stuff like that. I think it's, it's one of the things that like differs really wildly between creatives that I find is kind of, kind of cool. Uh, do you like so because you're doing so many different mediums? Um, Oops. How do you figure out what to work on? Like, do you keep like a list of like, oh, uh, you know what? I'll do a YouTube video today because I don't have a photography gig. Or, no, I like, no, I is have. It just, like, I have a Trello, and I uh, uh, okay, I have things mapped out. Um, like everything is mapped out the way the when it's going to happen. Okay. Um, and and it's it's easily adjustable. Like if something goes wrong or weather. Okay. Um, but um, things are pretty pretty 
pretty much set in stone for when this video is coming out, when this okay. photography gig is gotcha. happening. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty. Planning is important to me because freelance, if you don't plan, like you feel like you're naked. So yeah. or if you double book by mistake. Or... Yeah. So what um what's your favorite medium? Like, do you have one? Is it video? Is it photography? Is it <clears throat> like do you have like one that I would excite you the most. I would say the process of photographing, okay, is the most fun for me. Okay, um, it's a lot more instant feedback than a lot of other creative arts. The process of editing is less fun for me, but I know that okay. I have to be the one editing because okay. I took the photo with my okay. my color correction in mind. Yeah, so I don't necessarily like color correct. Like I, I don't like. Are seeing you a preset guy or no? I have a bunch of presets that I've created, and okay. you, actually, we've we've shared some serious, yeah. crazy presets. Yeah. So that's I'm funny. a heavy preset guy. Yeah, no, I like presets, but I also I I like log profiles in Lightroom. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I tend to use those a lot, and then tweak above those. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a different workflow. So it's more of a film workflow, which I guess makes sense because you you're doing both, and it's kind of interesting. You can get like a similar. Yeah. Consistent look and feel between mm -hmm. both places that way. And also when you're doing like a video that's showing a behind the scenes of you working on this thing, you yeah. can make the video match the photos, which is really cool. That's super cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, I would say that out of all of the things, directing is my favorite gig. Okay. Um, because when I'm done, I'm done. I understand that. So when you do photography or videography or anything like that, oh, it's tip. Of, the photograph is the tip of the iceberg. It's you just started. The the editing, like is the model and the makeup artist and everybody, like high fiving, yeah, like good yeah, job, yeah, you did yeah. great. Okay, have a good day. And I'm yeah. like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I have hours and hours of work ahead of me. <laughs> so like directing is the only gig where you actually get to go home with everybody else. Yeah, that's that's, that's actually an interesting point, Charles. Did you finish the build? Wow. I'm so proud are, are of Charles. Are you Charlie. ready for that the peel? That was so fast. Oh yeah, we get to we do the peel on stream. Oh. oh. We gotta be quiet. People like this. It's not very loud though. <laughs> that was the worst <laughs> peel I've ever seen in my life. What, what was that, sir? <laughs> Take those hands out of here. Now Jersey Devils, get out of there. Now Joe is like <laughs> Joe is like seven for seven of the PC turning on, hitting the power button the first uh -oh. time. Uh oh. Uh Simpone said that the peel is very satisfying though. Okay. And I know him, so he he only lies. By uh, the way. And I see Bad Mike says he needs to go to Micro Center and get a vibe case. Yeah, I think they're like ten bucks off right I, now. They, okay, so can I tell you something? No. The okay. Sure. <laughs> All right, cool. So the vibe case is the first time where I've actually oh, had the it. ability without like having to get custom paint done to yeah. get the white which is case. Why, which is why we did that. Um, oh. We did red, white, and silver and black. Makes um, me so happy. We wanted to be able to offer um, kind of more bulk, uh, less expensive color options because our paint jobs are beautiful, but they're just very expensive because it's all hand done. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm excited for you to you got to take this home with you today. Um, so tell me about the tell me about the 2080 Ti Asus. What's the difference between that and uh, and uh, the then a founder? Brent was telling me a little bit about it. Yeah, this is a um, this is a turbo, right? So it's a blower style card. So essentially, um, the 2080 Ti Founders Editions are what's called axial cooled. So the fan um, kind of pushes air all over the place. Like Charles is doing, and um, like tassels, and um, the turbo is nice because it will uh, it sucks air in from underneath and then blows it straight out the back, uh, so you don't Perfect. get like a dead spot. Yeah. Now, what I will say is we do use Founders Editions in the vibe, so if you know what you're doing and you arrange the airflow correctly, it's not an issue to use an axial cool card. Yeah, I think this is the first time I have seen you um, not use a Founders Edition. Yeah, we um we do a mix um a lot of times based on availability or. They're um, all the same though, right? But like in terms of like performance is not going to be much yeah, different. They're all the we same. we use the turbos particularly uh not usually in situations like this, but ones where we have to arrange two cards close to each other where there'd be restricted airflow. Ah. Um but this is going to perform fantastic and Wow, look at that RAM. It's like really glowy. Yeah, that RAM <laughs> There's is There's so much RGB the, happening right RAM now. Is beautiful. <laughs> you can disable it all so the RAM is controllable via the board and then the um the lights will be controllable via a remote control, so Oh, um, if Charles correct connected correctly, the it's probably on um, 
uh, motherboard mode. So the Vibe has like a controller board that lets you either control it via the board or the remote, oh, depending cool. on what kind of motherboard you have. But I think awesome, it's the man. Crosshair Hero, right? Yeah. This is uh this is super fun. Charles stop oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> oh, I like that one there. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's rave mode. <laughs> that's the unicorn vomit <laughs> mode. So yeah, man, this is like super fun. I'm glad um I think like I said at the top of the stream, I think it's cool to share creator stories and honest stories. Um not like the, you know, the normal stuff you hear and um, well, most people you have on here lie. No, no. It's just I, I'm talking about on the internet. Like oh, you, okay. you don't. Very few YouTubers or content creators like actually share like their life story or how they got to where they were, the amount of work it mm, is, or stuff yeah. like that. Like so much of all this stuff is like painting the just the sunny photo of it and like not the the grind to get there. And so I think yeah. it's. I think it's cool. And I mean, um, I'll be grinding for the for the, the foreseeable future. You know, like the yeah. grind doesn't stop. But you like it, so that's, I love it. That's what yeah. that's what's important. Um, love what you do. So, where can people uh, find your stuff? We, you get one plug here. Oh, cool! Um, like only one link? Or? No, no. You can give. Oh, okay. Uh, well, maybe I don't know now. I'm a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's really simple. No. Actually. So, where can where can people find your content? And like, yeah. Um, so my name. You want to share? Yeah. So my name is Tristan Pope, and I was an early adopter. So you can go to youtube.com slash Tristan Pope. That's you can unfair. go to twitter.com slash Tristan Pope. You can go to facebook.com slash Tristan Pope. Man, that's so unfair. You can go to instagram.com slash Tristan Pope. And you can go to twitch.com slash triage, T-R-1-A-G-E. Is it twitch.tv? It is twitch.tv, but you can also do twitch.com. I know. But, but yeah, triage is like my my video game handle, so T-R-1-A-G-E. So you're a 14-year-old? Uh... No, my 14-year-old one was the godfather. Okay. Um, and then I, I upgraded gotcha. as I got older. Yeah. Mine was a uh, cancer and heresy. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, super extreme. That's all right. It was a lyric. It got dark. It was a lyric from it. I was like in a. Um, Just fine. You spelled my name wrong. It's with an A. <laughs> I was in like an acoustic <laughs> prog rock band experiment side project, and it was a lyric from one of our songs. Oh, okay. The more you know. Uh huh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, dude, this was awesome. Um, I'm excited to see what content you create with this, and I would definitely. Oh yeah. Recommend checking out your channels. We're gonna do. Um, once you kind of, um, we're going to do a blog post about this and put the full specs on our blog, maingear.com yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to show, I'm going to show you guys, you're going to do some cool stuff. I'm going to do some stuff with this yeah. sh showing, uh, it's going to focus on kind of what the main gear experience is like. It's also going to focus on what this, the, you know, what a main gear computer can do, uh, for my kind of work. So, ch you know, subscribe to the YouTube channel for that, which yeah. is youtube.com slash Tristan. And we'll, 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 uh, we'll include that stuff in the blog post we do now too so cool uh and make sure if you want to talk to tristan and have him make fun of you for playing minecraft too much <laughs> join our discord channel <laughs> that's discord.gg slash main gear that was loaded and ready to go wasn't it <laughs> he had that ready since we were here oh man but you hang out in our discord a lot um yes and um so if, if you guys want to chat with tristan he's always hanging out there uh ready thanks for answering none of my questions tristan <laughs> <laughs> uh, ask him, should we answer some questions ask him on i'm tired though well i'll we'll ask answer three more questions okay we're gonna check chat now we got three questions hold on let me find one from sirius so that to be fair sirius usually asks about eight billion questions so well let's see i saw one that. earlier that i i thought was a good one uh um let's see oh uh, adobe rush what's your what do you think about adobe rush um, I think that's what he was asking. Uh, for, that's the for mobile editing. It's the it's the they video also editor have it on, on the, your yeah. It's, it's also on the desktop. Yeah, too. which is terrible. But like if you're, it's basically for mobile. It, it's not bad on the desk uh, for my own personal opinion. Uh, for it's like it's like Movie Maker, but uh, Adobe would, version. I would say it's a step above Movie Maker. Okay. Because at least it's got some. So it's got iMovie. Like, <laughs> it's not. It's the, not iMovie, but it's got like it's, some it's audio like tools. IMovie. <laughs> it's a like a dumbed down iMovie. Yes, and I, the, and the, the only reason I would use it is if you're editing, and this is actually where it comes in really helpful is where if you're editing vertical video on your phone. Oh yeah, they have a preset. And for they it. have a preset for vertical That's video. That's actually where I've used it. And yeah. so I use that a lot for my Instagram stories and my Instagram TV. So when I, because everything's vertical, yeah. so I have to flip things and adjust things. And that's a really good editor for that. That's cool. Yeah. And um, there's other decent, um, <laughs> inexpensive editing applications. Um, 
I don't hate me, but like a uh, power director is actually better than it has it deserves the right to be. I don't actually know what that is, so it's I don't. I can't hate you. Uh, oh, like um, it's it's actually surprisingly easy to use. Well, my dad loves Vegas, and I know he's in the channel right now because he just said I'm late tired. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say above that? Has it all? Has it has got all the good BIOS and power selection? I'm gonna say yes. To oh no, point. not yet. So he's talking about we found an article about. Uh, how AMD oh, and yeah. Windows Pro there was like a new allow you Windows to take advantage yes get extra megahertz. and he installed it yeah and it works yeah I'm really curious we haven't played around with it yet but um somebody brought it up to us too um and I'd love to maybe, maybe we'll do a video on that um yeah what, do, let's do one close up of the yeah. of the build before we cut out um what is your favorite ice cream um cookie dough <laughs> i'll just answer the questions really fast while they're doing this <laughs> so just shoot them shoot the questions and i'll just answer them it's gonna be great uh want to see oh yeah see the right i think he said something about lights but i don't i don't remember what the hell we were talking about so i don't i can't answer that question yeah i think he asked what the light was for it's like video oh it's for it's light. yeah it's, it's for photography but mobile photography and it's way overpriced and so i want to show people uh, how to affordably do that what a ryzen 3 two two zero zero g and a gtx six i can't answer that. i so uh would a ryzen uh, 3 2200 g and a 1660 be a decent build i would bump up to a slightly a uh, higher end ryzen cpu to go with that gpu you might bottleneck the graphics card a smidge with that um okay are we going to show the inside oh oh yeah so beautiful that is sexy the contrast on this build is super cool like the black tubes the black card but the white chassis and the white cables yeah and um, we i think we picked the white cables right yep. I, yeah that looks oh i just it's and when you put like the I'm, i want to put like white i mean sorry not white i want to put like pink led on the inside and just have everything pinked out with the cool. white you can hit the button and that's right? just gonna make me Happy, happy You know what? Person. Just stay where you are, Charles. It's fine. <laughs> I know you had a hard day. I'm not going to make you have to go grab a remote and change a button. Oh. <laughs> uh, cool. I think we're going to wrap this up. Tristan, it was awesome. <laughs> this is super fun. What? I called you Tristan. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Someone said he's going to make love to it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he's not wrong. <laughs> uh, it was a pleasure. This is super fun. Make sure to trick at, uh, check out Tristan's channels. We'll link some. Um, and see the content he creates with this and um, yeah we'll do something again too man sometime that was, that was awesome dude. cool awesome. thank you thanks for joining us make sure to follow us on uh, Twitter Instagram Twitch everywhere to see more content like this we're at Main Gear everywhere Main Gear's the bomb uh, and guys and also we have our Black Friday sale going on oh, we're yeah. Um, we're not doing any additional promotions. We might do like one system flash sale this weekend, but, uh, if you are interested in a main gear PC, the prices on our site are as good as it gets. So, uh, go to mingear.com, click on the black Friday banner, and we have a ton of really good deals up to $750 it's a hell of a deal savings. This time. It's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome deals. And can they know, use like, can they use promoter codes on top of those? I uh, sure give your code. So you guys should use the code <laughs> Tristan T R I S T A N all caps, and you'll get uh, what is it a two uh, extended to your warranty for free. Yep, and um and <laughs> and uh yeah, definitely check that stuff out. And thanks for joining us, and have a good weekend. Later, guys.